Very, very large area, uh, but there was a Home Depot store uh, that was open for obvious reasons. Uh, so I think things are happening, uh, but uh, not fast enough. Uh, there are a lot of people working there with a lot of energy. Uh, and if I had to, without, well, if I was going to bet, I'd probably want to have a little more knowledge than I have. Uh, but if I had to bet with the knowledge that I have, I would bet that things will come back, okay, and that uh, the demographics might be a little bit different, uh, but uh, it's not going to be, I mean, it's going to be a diverse city, I think, in the way that it had been. But uh, do you know anything? Uh, that's the best I can do. Sorry. Uh, if I could ask two, um, one has to do, has your idea caught on? You've been in business for so many years, and it's such an attractive idea. Aren't there other banks involved in this kind of work? Uh, in the U.S., there are about 50, 5 zero, 50 banks that have gotten certified by the Treasury Department as community development banks. There are about 250 community development credit unions, which would also be in the same business. And there are probably 700 large and medium-sized loan funds that are also in the business of financing housing and entrepreneurship. Internationally, there are now 200 uh, regulated banks that are providing uh, microfinance, which has been a phenomenally interesting international development. And there are maybe a handful of institutions that are broadening out into both small business and housing finance from microfinance. So I think it has grown slowly, but that it is a very serious business model, which has staying power for the very long term that's required to make real change. Um, but, it, but it's also a huge regulatory burden that you have to put up with. Okay. You know, I want to just add, I mean, uh, I totally agree with all that. Uh, just to add a, add a couple of points. Um, you know, there are many ways in which one never knows where opportunities will lead, okay? Uh, and Mary's reference to the CDFI legislation. You know, we were invited by Governor Clinton in 85 to go to Arkansas. We never owned the bank, but we raised all the capital. And we ran it for eight years. And he uh, became aware of what the potential was and began to think of it as a model. And when he became president, which we absolutely had no idea would ever happen. As a matter of fact, actively thought I thought it never would happen. Okay, but uh, but he did. He became president, and he introduced uh, <clears throat> the CDFI legislation, which has been an incentive uh, to uh, cause others to uh, do this sort of thing. Um, it's also it's not a model in which uh, uh, investors are going to get very rich, or at least nobody has uh, figured that part of it out yet. You've got to be sustainable. Uh, it's uh, uh, I often think that uh, this is the only job as an adult that I've had for more than three years, okay, uh, and it's now 35. Um, maybe I got lazy and decided to stop looking, but it's also the job is interesting because uh, we have the shareholders of Shorebank have all invested primarily for the purpose of doing development, okay, and every, every offering document, every offering circular has stated explicitly that the purpose of their investment is not to maximize return on capital, but rather to do development. So Mary and I and the other 500 employees of Shorebank essentially are working for those shareholders. At the same time, the entire organization is regulated by the Federal Reserve Board and then by banking regulators at, at uh, uh, subsidiary levels. They're under the law. They're obligated to regulate banks to high standards of safety and soundness, which includes profitability. So that we as managers, everybody in Shorebank, we're on a daily basis satisfying both masters, okay? And if we fail at one, we're finished. Um, and I think that's what makes the job interesting, but it doesn't, it also does not attract large amounts of capital uh, easily. The other thing I would add is that now Mary and I were lucky in that we got invited in 1983 uh, to go to, uh, to help this guy in Bangladesh who had some crazy idea about making loans to poor village people. Uh, that was Muhammad Yunus who won the Nobel Prize in 06. And for 10 years, Mary and I did all the financial feasibility work and helped them to raise about $170 million, probably more than that. Uh, but we got, so we got involved at the very beginning of the microcredit um, uh, phenomenon. And what's been very interesting, I think, there is, and we have a number of companies in Shorebank now, Bill's company, 
uh, it would take the rest of the evening if I went into the detail, uh, works in about 40 countries, okay, uh, sometimes uh, providing technical assistance, sometimes investing. And what we're seeing there is much more interest uh, in people trying to start uh, what become much larger systems. I mean, so that, you know, um, BRAC is um, one of our clients, store clients, has about 5 million members in just Bangladesh, uh, plus uh, we're helping them raise capital to expand in Africa. Uh, Grameen is another 5 million members. They become very large systems. And through some of our companies, we do find much more entrepreneurial energy trying to start these kinds of vehicles. It's really quite interesting to watch. The second question. Can I, yeah, oh, good. Uh, uh, in, today, in terms of today's problems, I, I was surprised at your numbers in terms of the ability to convert adjustable to fixed mortgages. They seem quite high. Uh, what are you doing that other people aren't? Are you accepting smaller margins or, I mean, it seems like the solution I hear so much about, but it, it seems to be meeting barriers. I think all that we're doing is spending a lot of time in a personal interview and getting to know a family and thinking about their debts and their history and trying to do the deal. And so that's a very old fashioned kind of underwriting. And we're, you know, I think we're building up sort of unusual experience that we know this data point now that 80% are uh, approvable. That's all we know right now. When it's all said and done, we are really just old fashioned bankers. Okay, I'm serious, okay. Uh, you should have heard more. It's, it's doing, it's, it's not a commercial. We don't even do it as a commercial. Uh, it's, uh, it's just getting to know the borrowers, getting to know the community, uh, and doing it that way. It's a great way to Thanks to Ron and Mary for a wonderful presentation, and Father Ted for being with us today, and Josh for your excellent nomination, and we Thanks to everybody for coming, and I'm sure Ron and Mary to answer any other uh, questions people might have. And thanks again, and we stand adjourned.